Hello and welcome to Blessed Man Meditations. My name is Andy. If you're new to my channel, you'll see several videos with topics related to a biblical worldview. I've gone through uh, a series of presentations on the evidence for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as taken from Josh McDowell's The New Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Um, I've included some information on the book by Norm Geisler and Frank Turek. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist on the evidence for the resurrection there. Um, there's been a couple of other miscellaneous presentations, one about how to have peace with God, um, one about uh, the wisdom of God found in Jesus Christ as revealed in the book of Proverbs. Uh, and currently I'm going through a series on the book by Josh McDowell, More Than a Carpenter. If you have found value in my work, please consider supporting my ministry by purchasing my published work. This volume here you see it left. It is a volume on the first 30 chapters of the book of Psalms. Uh, it's an expositional devotional commentary. It's available where books are sold. The publisher is Zulon Press. So tonight's chapter from More Than a Carpenter is chapter 3, Lord, Fire, or Lunatic. So plenty of people are content to regard Jesus as merely a good moral man or an exceptionally wise prophet. However, it's never enough just to consider Jesus to be a good moral man or an exceptionally wise prophet, because he made greater claims about his true identity than that, and one's eternal destiny depends on his identity. C.S. Lewis correctly said that a man who is a mere man yet said the things which Jesus said about himself would be a lunatic or the devil. Lewis said that either Jesus is the son of God, a madman, or something worse. Lewis said you can call Jesus a fool, you can kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. Jesus' teachings cannot be separated from his person. It's not sufficient to accept him as a good moral teacher and still reject him as Lord. Jesus regarded himself and his messages as inseparable. Jesus claimed that being God must either be true or it must be false. If Jesus claimed about being God is false, if he's not really God, then there are just two other alternatives. Either he knew that it was false that he is God, which means that he would be a liar for claiming to be God, or Jesus did not know that it was false that he is God, which means that for him to claim to be God while not knowing that he really wasn't God, that would make him a lunatic. So he's either really God and really Lord, or he's a liar or he's a lunatic. So let's first examine the question, was Jesus a liar? If when Jesus made his claims he knew that he was not God, then he was lying and, del and deliberately was deceiving his followers. If he was a liar, Jesus was also a hypocrite, because liars don't teach others to be honest like Jesus taught the disciples to be honest. If Jesus lied about his true identity as God's son, since he told others to trust him for their eternal welfare, he had a demon. For him to claim to be the son of God when he, uh, when he really wasn't, if, if he really wasn't, that would be tantamount to him having a demon. If Jesus made the claims that he made about himself while fully knowing that those claims that he made about himself were not true, then he would have been unspeakably evil for deceiving his followers by giving them such false hope while knowing that the hope that he was giving them was false. If he was teaching them to follow him based on lying about his identity, that would be unspeakably evil. If Jesus made the claims that he made about himself while fully knowing the falsehood of those claims, since he could have avoided dying by crucifixion by his denying his claims about himself, he would have been foolish to allow um, the crucifixion and death to happen to him if he could have easily just avoided it by denying his, by, by, by revealing the fact that he really wasn't the Son of God. But of course... He allowed those things to happen because those things that led to his death and his death fulfilled prophecy, and it was necessary for our forgiveness. When people ignorantly claim that Jesus was merely a good moral teacher, they miss the fact that someone would be highly immoral for intentionally deceiving people about their true identity. 
you can't just say he was a good moral teacher and reject his claim to uh, being Lord and reject his uh, sovereignty. Um, he's got to be Lord. Um, he's not just Savior. You hear talk, people talk about making him Savior and Lord. He already is Savior and Lord. And if people don't bow to him as Lord, they will not uh, enter uh, heaven. To conclude that Jesus was a liar does not support the thrust of his earthly ministry in which he did good, for, did good things for others by healing them and, and feeding them, among other things. So he did other he did good for for others by healing them by feed by feeding them and doing other things, um, and so why would somebody who made uh, his mark by doing so much good for other people, why would um, why would somebody like that be a liar, whose life was marked by such good works? So to see the message uh, about Jesus leading to people's changed lives, which are marked by moral good, uh, seems inconsistent with um, him being a liar. If people who follow him are going to live morally uh, outstanding lives, imperfect lives, but morally uh, righteous lives, um, for him to be a liar, it would be inconsistent with with the uh, external righteousness that is demonstrated by his followers. So even skeptics often admit that the positive influence Christianity on the world uh, has had on the world um, is uh, even skeptics admit that Christianity has positively influenced the world. Uh, some skeptics will admit the good deeds that Christ followers do uh, have a positive impact on the world. It's just that skeptics will say that you don't have to be a Christ follower to do good for other people. Now in the book, McDowell quotes somebody named William Lecky, who is a British historian, and Lecky is an opponent of Christianity. And Lecky observes how Christianity inspired the hearts of men with an impassioned love. Lecky observes how Christianity has shown itself capable of acting on all ages, nations, temperaments, and conditions. Lecky observes how Christianity has not been the only the highest pattern of virtue, but the strongest incentive to its practice. So, following Christ leads people to uh, do good to people of all ages, of all nations, of all mindsets, and in all kinds of um, environments. Christianity... Um, as has given people the incentive to do good to other people. Historian Philip Schaff notes that the testimony that Jesus was God would be blasphemous or madness if that testimony was not true. And of course, that's what the Pharisees thought, and that's why they had him crucified. They thought that he was blaspheming by declaring himself to be God. Philip Schaff further notes that delusions of grandeur within Jesus about Jesus' own identity are out of the question because of the fruit of his life. Exactly. We're saying that, that uh, Jesus' uh, positive uh, fruit uh, backs up his claim about his identity. Um, we should believe him based on his word because his works backed up his word. Someone who lived as Jesus lived, taught as Jesus taught, and died as Jesus died could not have been a liar. So was Jesus a lunatic. Could he have mistakenly thought himself to be God? But just be sincerely, just be sincere and just be wrong. Could he have been sincere in thinking that he was God, but just have been wrong about his thinking? Well, no, because for someone to mistakenly think himself to be God, especially in the context of a fiercely monotheistic culture as the Jewish culture was, and then to tell others that their eternal destiny depended on their believing in him, uh, those would be delusions and the ravings of a lunatic. Um, he would have been deluded and would have been a lunatic to make the claims about himself uh, that he made if he were wrong. Um, he would have known that the Jewish people of his day were very, um, very uh, committed to their monotheistic 
Judaism. And for him to intentionally challenge them to turn away from the wrong parts of that and turn to him wholeheartedly, um, he, in his right mind, since he always was, is in his right mind, um, that would be a, a very risky thing for him to do, and it automa- and, and it led to his sentence of death um, because they, the Jews, could not stand him coming against their established religion. And he knew that um, they, they were going to react that way. And he would have been, uh, they, they could have thought him to be crazy for making such claims. And this is why um, some people would think of him as a lunatic. Today we would treat someone who claimed to be God as deluded or and self-deceived. That we would treat them as a lunatic. If somebody came uh, into your town, into your place of employ, and into your place of uh, leisure, and uh, claimed to be what Jesus claimed to be, uh, we would think of that person as deluded and self-deceived. But in Jesus, we do not observe signs that accompany insanity. Could someone who spoke such profound words be insane? Could someone who could teach at such a in-depth level be insane? In fact, he demonstrated that he was healthier than anyone else around him. So the question remains, if he wasn't a liar, if he wasn't a lunatic, was Jesus Lord? The conclusion seems to be obvious that Jesus was not a liar or was not a lunatic. So, the only remaining option is that Jesus is Lord. In spite of the logic and evidence, many people cannot bring themselves to the conclusion that Jesus is Lord. The issue with these three alternatives, which uh, is, which is, let's see, the issue with these three alternatives is not which is possible, for all three are possible. It's possible that he could be a liar, it's possible that he could be a lunatic, it's possible that he could be Lord. But the question is, which is most probable? Is it most probable that he's that he's lying? Is it most probable that he's a lunatic? Is it most probable that he's Lord? It's not sufficient to declare that Jesus is more is merely a good moral teacher, and that's it. It's not sufficient because he made uh, such absolute claims about himself and about God and about God's nature uh, that it's not sufficient to just declare Jesus to be merely a good moral teacher and nothing more. So, he's either a liar, a lunatic, or a lord and God. The evidence favors Jesus as Lord. So, that concludes this study. Uh, Next time, we're going to talk about how does science impact Christianity. Can one be a good Christian and think that science is a good thing? Tune in next time to find out on Blessed Man Meditations. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please consider supporting my ministry by purchasing my published work, Pinnacles and Plateaus, the volume on the first 30 chapters of the Book of Psalms. And thank you for watching, and I hope you have a blessed rest of your day.